Having the design captured in the schematics and laid out in the PCB document is essential. But at some point, purchasing will want to know the part number of the components used and where to source them. In this section, we will see how the enhanced active bomb document in Altium Designer 18 will facilitate transition of supply chain information from designers to the procurement team. The main view of the active bomb is the bomb items list. This list shows a tabular view of the components detected in the PCB design project. It also includes additional bomb items, such as fasteners or ESD bags, which we can add directly into the active bomb through the add new, then custom item command. We can then change its quantity and apply designators by right-clicking on the row, then add instances. There are three view modes available to display the bomb items, which can be toggled using the three icons above the list. The first mode is the flat view, which shows a row per component. Next is the base view, where a row is assigned for each unique component. In this view, components are grouped by parameters defined in the component grouping window accessed through the properties panel. Lastly, the consolidated view is used when the project has variants to display a consolidated bomb for all variants. For example, in the LED not pot variant in this project, two LEDs, one being DS1, another being DS2, are made to be not populated. Thus, they will not be shown in the flat nor the base view, but they will be shown when the consolidated view is active. An additional column stating the quantity of the components for the variants will also be made visible in this view. Line numbers can also now be added to the list by clicking on the line icon. The line number options, accessible through the drop-down beside the line icon, allows designers to define the start line number and its increment. These line numbers are often used during a bomb data exchange between designers and other project stakeholders to explicitly identify the corresponding component in the design. When an item is selected, the supply chain configuration interface will be shown at the bottom of the window. In this view, each row is referred to as a solution. Each solution is basically a specific manufacturer part. The components in your design will access the solutions through various methods depending on the origin of the component. If the components are placed from the Altium Content Vault, the solutions will be brought from their part choice list defined within the vault. For example, our LEDs were brought in from the Content Vault. Thus, we will have the solutions being brought in from the part choice list defined. Commonly, Components are placed from local libraries, such as schematic, integrated, or database libraries. And these components often have manufacturer parameters. For example, our resistors and capacitors components have manufacturer-related parameters like manufacturer and MPN, which stands for manufacturer part number. In Altium Designer 18, Active Bomb can search for that corresponding manufacturer part instead of having designers manually attach supplier links per part. To do this, we must first define the component parameters which contains the manufacturer information. This is done through the Edit button beside Manufacturer link in the Properties panel. Once we have defined the component parameters which correspond to the manufacturer name, and manufacturer part number, we can then hit the refresh button in the BOM items view. 
we will then see solutions being sourced for components with matching manufacturer details. In our case, we will see solutions being added to the resistors and capacitor. Lastly, for components placed from local libraries which do not have manufacturer details within the component parameters, solutions would have to be added via a manual solution within the active bomb. For example, our header component do not have any manufacturer parameters. Thus, we can add a solution manually to this component by hitting the add solution, then add manual solution command. Note that this procedure will only add the chosen supplier to the component. If additional suppliers are to be added to the same solution, we would have to repeat the procedure and choose another supplier with the same manufacturer part number. As a quick recap, we have just seen the three methods of how solutions can be associated with components in our project. Regardless of the three methods used, once the solution has been associated, suppliers which carry the solution will be listed in the active bomb. The active bomb will then aggregate live parts information from external suppliers, funneling information such as price, stock levels, and minimum order quantities back into this document. By default, the suppliers are automatically ranked based on price and stock level. However, these ranks can be manually changed through the drop-down within each supplier's box. Generally, we would have a preferred list of suppliers to source our components. We can define this suppliers list through the properties panel. In this window, we can enable or disable suppliers within this active bomb. We can also change the supplier priority as well. By checking on the Use Supplier Priority checkbox, the suppliers will then be automatically ranked based on the suppliers defined in this window instead of price and stock level. For example, we will make DigiKey as the highest priority in this list and check on the Use Supplier Priority checkbox. We will then see that DigiKey will have the highest rank despite other suppliers having a lower price and larger stock of this particular component. The active bomb also includes a comprehensive set of bomb checks that are automatically performed each time the bomb is updated. This feature can be found within the properties panel. It will process the bomb items and check for violations associated with design items and part choices. Like the ERC in schematics and DRC in PCB, bomb checks can be configured as well. By hitting the gear icon below its view, we can define the violations to be reported as fatal error, error, warning, or no report. These checks will ensure that our components are matched correctly with its solutions, are in stock, and are well within the target price. The bomb items list can also be filtered based on the bomb check violations by clicking on the filter icon beside the violations. To reset all filters, we can simply hit the filter icon on the items column header. After assigning the solutions and corresponding supplier and its ranks, we can now view the calculated price per board and the order price in the properties panel. Upon changing the board's production quantity, the price per board will be affected as well, since it takes price breaks into account. As expected, the order price is simply the multiplication of the production quantity and price per board. Currency can also be changed through its dropdown for price localizations. All the defined supplier information, along with the required production quantity and localized currency, will then be reflected in the BOM items list. 
The columns shown on this list can be configured through the Columns tab in the Properties panel. In this tab, we can toggle the visibility of columns which represent PCB, database, document, and part provider's parameters. Once we have the necessary information in our BOM items list, we can then generate the BOM report through reports, then BOM. This report can also be generated through an outjob document where the active BOM will be used as the data source. In this module, we look at the enhancements of Active Bomb in Altium Designer 18 to facilitate the transition of part information from design to procurement. In the next module, we will see how fabrication and assembly drawings can be produced interactively through the Draftsman document.